Good morning. Hello from the Oklahoma Insurance Department. My name is Adrienne Selvage. I am in the communications division here at OID. Just wanted to say hello. Um, thank you for joining us for um, our fraud prevention web series known as Hoodwinked. The Oklahoma Insurance Department started this series a number of years ago with the goal of preventing um, fraud and scams that are targeting people in our state. And we used to take these all over the state and the last two years have been virtual, but we are very grateful that you have logged in and you're joining us. Before I begin, I wanted to tell you who we are, what we do. Um, the Oklahoma Insurance Department, also referred to as OID, um, is responsible for regulating the insurance market, and we are responsible for making sure the insurance companies take care of the policies um, and the commitment they've made to um, Oklahoma consumers. We have an entire team devoted to answering questions about your homeowner's policy, your auto, your health insurance, anything related to insurance, we can help. If you would like to reach out to us, you can call us toll free 1-800-522-0071. Again, that's 1-800-522-0071. You can go to our website, oid.ok.gov. Um, we would love to help you if you need anything. Um, and now I'll get to today. Um, today's webinar, you'll be able to see and hear us, but we cannot see or hear you. So if you have a question, we would love for you to post that in our chat. Down at the bottom of your screen, you should see a few things. Um, one of them would be chat. And if you click on that, you can type a question in there and we will get to that at the end. Um, so please type them there. And now I'd like to introduce Ray Walker. Ray Walker is the divisional director for the Medicare assistance program at the Oklahoma insurance department. Mr. Walker has more than 20 years experience working in and around the healthcare industry, primarily in insurance. Walker currently serves on the advisory committee to the state council on aging and recently completed his second term on the ship steering committee, which he served as the vice chair for the senior health insurance assistance program steering committee, as well as the leadership council for the MIPA grant program. I'm going to hand it over to you, Ray. All right. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, glad you folks are with us and uh, can join us today. Uh, we've got a really good uh, event for you. Uh, before we get started, I do want to remind you that we've got several more of these events coming up in the next several Thursdays at 10 a.m. We're going to have someone talking about banking fraud, securities fraud, contractor fraud, a lot of things that, that I think you'll find very, very interesting. So, you know, please take advantage of that. Go to our website, oid.ok.gov, and the button will be right there for you to register for all or just a few of those events. So uh, please, you know, take the time to go in there and do that. Uh, wanted to also really quickly before we get started, remind you that the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department is there to assist you with any questions you've got about Medicare or Medicare fraud or assistance programs. So please, you know, take advantage of that. It's all, you know, you can find that information on the OID website. You can also call us directly at 1-800-763-2828 and someone would be happy to help you. Also, if you call the 800 number that Adrian gave a moment ago, someone can route you uh, to our division. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Today's topic is gonna be on social security fraud. And we are very blessed to have a uh, longtime veteran of the uh, Social Security Administration with us today. Jose Olivero is a public affairs specialist for the Social Security Administration in Oklahoma. Prior to that, he was the wage report specialist in Oklahoma and North Texas and the agency's liaison officer to the IRS. He's been with the agency since 2004, where he started as a bilingual claims representative. He holds a bachelor degree in Roman like romance languages from Cameron University in Lawton and a master's of Spanish literature from the University of Oklahoma in Norman. He was an instructor of Spanish language and culture at the University of Oklahoma in Norman and is a retired Sergeant First Class of the U.S. Army Medical Corps with 21 years of active service. He's an active member of St. Joseph Catholic Church in Norman 
and he's married to Gloria and is blessed with five children and seven grandchildren. So that puts him one grandchild ahead of me, and I hope he holds the title. So, Jose, thank you for joining us. We're really excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you for giving the opportunity to uh, visit with you guys today about this very important subject of um, uh, the, the issues that we have in our country concerning uh, identity theft and scams that are going on uh, in our country. What I'm going to do, I'm going to share with you uh, my uh, screens. All right, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the scams and the things that are going on in the nation today. Uh, the first thing uh, we're going to talk about is the, the that you need to be aware of the scams. And in order to um, do that, we're giving you three tips concerning uh, this issue. First of all, you need to understand the threats. Uh, this uh, uh, scammers, fraudulent people use uh, forms to impersonate uh, and, and scheming people out of their, their uh, monies and their account. They might contact you and claim to be members of uh, Social Security or the IRS, uh, or some other government agency requesting information. They might claim that you have won a lottery or um, became eligible for some investments if you pay upfront fees. They might uh, design emails and text messages that look legitimate and request uh, your response. The most recent scams is the automated recording stating that social security that you know social security number has been stolen and a suspect and then we're gonna um there's some kind of suspicious activity going on with it and that you must call a number uh, otherwise your assets will be frozen uh, if you provide the information that this can one you're going to be all okay be aware that these types of scams um and identity theft and be in, in, in guard for them. You need to exercise caution. In general, government agencies do not call you unless you have some kind of business with them uh, and, and or send you any kind of suspicious email requesting fees for services or for you to transfer some money via wires or uh, gift cards. So they build you need to build a habit of verifying the identity of anyone that who asks you for personal information over the phone and uh, just tell them that you will respond uh, to their inquiry through the agency's customer service channels if they pressure you into providing information or money over the phone trust me it's a scam and you need to hang up the other thing that you need the other tip is that you need to secure your identity your information Store your social security card in a secure location and avoid carrying it with you. Shred any documents that list information such as social security number, bank information, or anything like that. Avoid opening emails that are, that are coming from sources that are unknown to you or sus uh, avoid clicking into suspicious uh, hyperlinks. Uh, equip your computer with some kind of antivirus software and, and maintain strong passwords and regularly check your credit report for any kind of suspicion activity. Now, we do contact citizens at Social Security. In general, it, this is uh, people who have ongoing businesses with us, and we will call you by phone to uh, perhaps you apply for disability or for some uh, some kind of benefits with us. Other than that, we will not be calling you out of the blue. Social Security employees will never threaten you for information. We will not uh, state that you're facing any kind of potential arrest or any other legal action if you fail to, fail to provide this information to us. In those cases, that is a red flag right there. It's fraud, and you should simply hang up. Do not try to play smart or think that you're going to get over them or do something that um, for, for a good time and for a good laugh. These people are professional criminals, and they know how to get the information that they want from you. 
One of the things that we as Social Security are always concerned with is also the prevention of abuse and financial exploitation for the elderly. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped secure the future for our uh, financial future for beneficiaries uh, and provide information and tools uh, to safeguard uh, your journey through your life. Unfortunately, millions of seniors uh, are uh, suffer from, from uh, elder abuse. That's several forms of mistreatment, including physical abuse, neglect, and financial exploitation. Each year, older Americans lose more than $2.6 billion because of this kind of crimes. Raising awareness of elderly abuse is very important for Social Security, and especially for our Office of the Inspector General, because many of our customers are seniors, and some of them depend on representative payees to receive and manage their Social Security benefits. It is important to learn the signs and increase awareness of those threats to seniors to help identify and prevent any kind of elder abuse. And remember, anybody can be a victim. Therefore, there are some things that you can do to protect yourself and others from neglect. There are a number of red flags that you will come to you that will help you kind of uh, see that there might be some issues. For example, isolation, especially by caregivers that isolate their, their, the person that they're caring for. Uh, perhaps you visit and there's uh, unpaid bills or some utilities that have been cut off like water, or electricity, or cable. Uh, unusual or quick changes on wills or personal financial documents. Perhaps some missing medications uh, that your elderly person should be taking. And of course, bruises and welts, especially in the face. If you're not certain about abuse, that any kind of abuse is, is taking place, but you would like to have that checked out, please make sure that you report any kind of suspicion to the professional investigators. It is important also to stay connected and prevent isolation. Elders without strong social network face a great risk of abuse, neglect, and exploitation. It is up to us to ensure that our community uh, are supportive and engage uh, our elder uh, population. One simple way is to stay in touch with those uh, who are elderly in our community, knock on your neighbor's door and say hi, or, or maybe start an uh, intergeneration uh, book club or a movie night. You can also support community efforts to empower elders and fight isolation by acting as volunteers, uh, support, perhaps give some meals. So, of course, avoid uh, these forms of exploitation. You can go into all kinds of websites and I'm gonna show, give you some information. Now, another thing to do is to sign up for direct deposit to make sure that pensions and social security checks go through directly to a safe account. Also to prevent this kind of abuse, you, can, you should consult with someone that you trust don't be pressured or intimidated into immediate decision, pressure sales kind of thing. Don't sign any documents that you're not completely understand or without consulting with an attorney or a family member that you trust. It's important that you shred documents and I cannot overemphasize the importance of this. Uh, there's a number of shredders, some of them that have shred into uh, strips and that is not really an ideal type of shredder. Uh, there's some shredders that uh, uh, turn the, the, your documents into confetti, and that is the real good type of uh, uh, shredder that you can use before you dispose all that stuff in the trash. If you're offer any kind of prices, loan, or some investments that sound too good to be true, well, you know the old adage, it probably is not true. Now, in addition to those tips, there are very, uh, a variety of local resources in the community that can help address adult abuse or elderly abuse. Of course, adult protective services agencies that investigate and can also respond to suspected 
uh, abuse of people. And here you have uh, some telephone numbers and some websites that you can go visit uh, to get more information about elderly abuse and how to prevent it. Uh, there are many, many resources, there are legal uh, abuse uh, hotlines uh, in every county in Oklahoma. So it's important that uh, perhaps you keep this information handy and uh, uh, have it uh, available to you. The next thing we're going to talk about is identity theft. There are over 3.2 million reports of identity theft reported to the Federal Trade Commission in 2019. Uh, we at Social Security receive an average of 35,000 calls each and every month from people reporting uh, issues about fraud. And it shows here that uh, some statistics that we have that one out of 10 people uh, lost money in uh, scams in 2019, about $667 million during that year. Now, this is only the reports. Uh, and we know that probably uh, four out of five scams going reported, unreported, uh, either because they're small amounts and then people don't want to go through trouble, or seniors are afraid to tell their families that they have been scammed, uh, fearing that they will, you know, in turn uh, say, well, grandma can no longer take care of her own business. And they're afraid to lose their independence. It is important that uh, you understand identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America. You need to protect your personal identification numbers, your little pin for your cards, uh, do not write down your passwords, and if you do, keep it in, not in your purse or in your wallet or in your desk drawers. Put it in a secure location where nobody can get down and find it. Uh, like I said, try to memorize it rather than write it down. And refrain from using simple things like your mother's maiden name or the last four of your social security number. This is where scammers really know uh, the easy way of getting into your uh, business. Uh, th there's a great impact uh, in our community uh, with this issue of identity theft. People open credit cards account, uh, and that will result in down the road your denial for loans and, and credit card uh, as well. They use that information to open uh, utility accounts and applying for your tax returns and your stimulus checks as well. Uh, they apply for loans. They even apply for, for employment, uh, for medical care, uh, or, you know, there's illegal use of your social security number as well. These are people who know what they're doing. Now, the social security number is, is an important thing for you to safeguard. We at Social Security do everything we can to protect your Social Security number and to keep it uh, in, in a, a, your records completely confidential. You should be careful about sharing your Social Security number. Even when people ask you about it, you need to realize or, or be sure who are you sharing that information with uh, because not uh, this is once, once that information is out there, it's out there and we really can't do anything about it. Um, you should keep your card, like I said, in a secure place as well as on any other document that have that information uh, in the lock box maybe, or uh, perhaps in your safety deposit box, something along those lines to ensure that that information, that someone that comes to your house maybe to clean or to cook or to deliver something will not have easy access. Uh, to that information. And of course, as I mentioned before, make sure you don't carry your social security card with you uh, all the time, because uh, if you lose your wallet or you lose uh, your, your uh, whatever uh, paper or things that you have in there, uh, then it's, it's uh, uh, impossible for us to really help you that much. Now, let me share with you some of the uh, identity theft uh, concerns and things that are uh, happening. 
and how these uh, people utilize your social security information. Uh, there's a, there's a, such a thing as identity, uh, identity cloning or concealment. And this is a situation where uh, a, a thief uh, impersonates someone in order to conceal the, their own true identity. Uh, for example, this, this is uh, generally found in uh, perhaps people who are illegal aliens that they will use that information, your social security number to uh, be able to find work. And so therefore they're using that social security number when the employers check on that, uh, they will find that that social security number is legitimate. So they'll be using your name and social security number to work. There are criminal uh, identity thefts, and of course, the criminal fraudulent person identify. Um, this is when the person identified themselves using your name and social security number to the police. If perhaps they get a, about to be arrested, and they say, "Well, I'm so and so, and this is my social security number," and the police will pull it up, and it, it is legit. So charges could be charged against you. Uh, based on that, and, and you know, they simply can obtain also fake IDs, and they will have your name, your social security number, even your address, but it will be their picture. Now, there's also a, another variation of uh, ID theft. It's called a synthetic uh, identity theft, uh, in which uh, a is a they partially fabricate information using your your information. Uh, in their own ways. For instance, they will open a uh, Facebook account and they will have uh, your information in there and pictures that they may have stolen from your Facebook page, but the contact goes directly to them. And this is how they scam people. Uh, one of the uh, things that had really come forward in the past uh, few years uh, it has been the dating sites where uh, they they entice seniors and elders in you know who are maybe uh, isolated and, and alone and they strike a friendship and you look into the Facebook page and they have stolen uh, pictures and they create a total different persona into the system and you know they start telling you about themselves. Of course, this is all lies. They start telling you, you know, some point about their needs, about, uh, you know, that they're having this issue and the one that give you a sad story. Uh, and the whole idea is to get you to send them perhaps a small amount. They normally start with, you know, a small, like, you know, $30, $50, or, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and progressively, it gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, there are many cases here in, in not just in the United States, but right here in Oklahoma of this kind of fraud going on uh, where they have stolen somebody else's ID and they uh, go to that go to that process. And uh, before you know it, we have some elderly people uh, giving away a lot of their money. There's also a medical ID theft. And once again, this is the same thing if you don't. It, these people go to the trash, they go uh, through, you know, they go to the landfill. They can, you know, you, your trash can get picked up on Friday mornings. You put it up, you know, Thursday night. Uh, you're giving them all night to go through your trash. And if you're being targeted, uh, they're going to go through there, maybe take a couple of bags of trash. You don't even notice it. And if you have some documentation in there that you uh, mail or something like that that you didn't shred, uh, they could get a hold, for instance, of your Medicare number. And with that, uh, if they need health care at some point, they will use that number. And, you know, here's the bills coming down the road. Uh, you know, a few weeks later, a few months later, you start getting bills from Medicare, from insurance company, from the hospitals, and, and they have your name, your address, your Medicare information, uh, and, and you have never been to that hospital. Uh, another form of uh, ID theft uh, is, is a child ID theft. And this is where uh, criminals 
obtain the information of minor children. And they use this information to claim in, uh, in their IRS records, uh, get, get uh, uh, refunds or uh, stimulus checks this year. They use the children's information to open uh, credit cards. And uh, way back in the years when I was going to college, this, this was a, a big deal uh, where people would steal children's uh, social security information. And uh, perhaps you recall 20 years plus ago, where if you sign up for a different carrier, they will give you like a hundred dollar refund or something like that. And the checks will be coming in on that chil in those children's names. Uh, and they cash them and then they disappear. Uh, naturally, probably the most common type of identity theft is, is related to finances. And that financial identity theft includes obtaining uh, credit cards, loans, uh, goods and services, uh, while, you know, they're charging it to someone, someone else. But there's, as I mentioned before, the tax ID theft and once again, these are people who use those numbers to uh, refund, to get your refunds. And, and this is the time of the year where you will find a lot of that. Now, some of the techniques that they use, like I said, they go through the, uh, what they call dumpster diving. They, they go through the your trash and uh, places where they, especially if you live like in an apartment or uh, a, a residential home for seniors, they know. A, that that's a, a, a gold mine right there. Uh, also, they, they retrieve personal data from from all equipment. So if you have like an old computer, old laptop that you no longer want, or something like this, uh, or maybe cell phones, uh, before you get rid of those, you need to make sure that you clear uh, all the cache, the information that is in there. Uh, get rid of the hard drives because people who know what they're doing, they simply get uh, in there, open it up and get all your personal information. Um, of course, they steal your, your credit card information, your, your passport, uh, you know, all kinds of things like this, uh, and, and your mail. So if you have a mailbox in front of your house, try not to put uh, your bills out there uh, before the postman come and put it there in a place where you can see it during the day. If you leave it overnight, uh, someone can just come and grab that, and if there's a check in there, now they have your bank account, they have your, your routing number, your name, your telephone number, all that information is in there. Um, there's, there's also uh, the issue of uh, uh, car readers, and sometimes you will find this like uh, uh, on the gas stations where you go and fill up, and what they do is they put a little uh, car reader right there where you... Uh, go on and, and pump your gas and you put in your credit card and the reader is a very small thin thing that goes right over it uh, and you really if you're not paying attention you might not see it uh, and they can read your credit card information and uh order stuff and i personally went through that a couple of years ago went to louisiana on a trip to visit some friends and as soon as i came back i got a call from my credit union that's my credit card has been used to order like a thousand dollars worth of uh, video equipment. Uh, and of course I haven't done that and, but they were able to pick that up right away. And I am a professional. I should have spotted that, but I didn't. So you need to be always aware of this kind of thing. Uh, there's also the thing called the sh uh, shoulder surfing. And these are individuals who hang around ATM machines. If you go like to, uh, fast, foods or uh, uh, maybe uh, 7-Elevens or Circle K or so on, uh, who are, you know, keeping an eye behind your shoulder to see what your PIN number is. Uh, and they might be able to get that, uh, your cards and, and get stuff out of out, out of the machine. Uh, of course, there, there's the real professionals who uh, can do, you know, security bridges in, in big companies. Uh, hospitals, and we have heard about this um, financial institution. And if you get information that your institution had that, it's important that you know what to do uh, concerning that and to make sure that you're not uh, being victimized. Uh, there's also another thing that they use 
that um, announced um, bogus jobs uh, in the internet and Facebook. Uh, and you see this sometimes where, you know, stuffing envelopes and, you know, can make $17 an hour. Well, what they do is, and I'm not saying that all those people are scammers. Uh, I have, I personally have never responded to that, but this is the kind of thing that then they ask you, okay, well, send us a resume um, and, and, you know, to get in to see if you qualify for the job. And here you are sending them, you know, your price, your his, working history, your name, your home address, your telephone number. And, and sometimes they even ask you for banking information so they could send you your check. Uh, so you need to be aware, once again, if it looks too good to be true, uh, you know, it probably is. Uh, sometimes of these uh, professional people, they, they, they infiltrate companies that hold um, personal information on people. And, you know, there's nothing really you can do about that. But once again, you need to be aware of this sort of thing. Uh, and, and probably the, the, uh, when you hear in the news that uh, there was a data breach somewhere, make sure that your name was not in there uh, or that you're doing, if you're doing business with that company, contact them right away. Um, and, um, Jose? Yes, yes, sir. Hey, it's Ray. I just wanted to do a quick quality check. I, I've noticed that your slides aren't advancing. Is that because you haven't advanced them or are we having another glitch? No, we're good. Okay. All right. Looks like they're moving now. Thanks. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm reading out of my notes to make sure that I uh, talk about some of these things. Once again, um, Facebook and MySpace and that sort of thing. Be careful uh, who you share information with, uh, because this is this is one of the biggest sources uh, of uh, ID theft and scams. Uh, that we're finding uh, throughout uh, the community. So if you do get scammed, you need to call the companies uh, that uh, know about fraud. So if it's uh, uh, your credit card company or so on, you need to let them know right away so they can cancel your account, give you a new number and stop any kind of payments. Uh, they maybe place a, a fraud alert uh, on your credit report to ensure that uh, if something comes up, uh, you're covered. Uh, report the identity theft to the Federal Trade Commission as soon as you can. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission has a wonderful site uh, called the um, Id Id um, identitytheft.gov. It's a new site that was uh, uh, put into effect in, in the past uh, year and a half or so. And uh, what they do, they they help you explain what happened. They ask particular questions about your situation uh, so you can relate to them, you know, how you got scammed. Uh, they get uh, that information and they go through to help you uh, come up with what's called a recovery plan. And this plan is set up to help you create uh, a way to recover from uh, it has like a checklist of all the things that you should do to recover from this this theft, uh, and of course, uh, put you in plan into action. If you create an account with them, they will walk you through each recovery step, update your plan as as needed, uh, track your progress, and they have a whole bunch of you can use. Uh, to, to help you. Uh, for instance, if you go through, uh, they will ask you, you know, what kind of a scam was it? Did uh, somebody use, for instance, your information to apply for unemployment benefits? If that's the case, it has a, a, a decision tree to help you decide which way you go with that. Uh, whether it was maybe your, your federal tax, somebody took that or your economic payments, uh, some other type. Or, or there was an information data breach uh, where you think your information was that, and it will uh, help you go through that process um, to report. It creates uh, uh, letters, uh, pre-filled forms and letters that you can use to, uh, to notify credit report companies, uh, people, perhaps companies that uh, are sending you bills that were not yours. Uh, they, they had 
it, it, they have a tremendous amount of uh, assistance for you in identitytheft.gov. Uh, and at this point, if you have not been a, a victim, I will still uh, maybe visit that website. You can share that information with uh, friends and neighbors, because like I said, uh, they, they say they say uh, tremendous amount of ID theft that is going on that people who have been victimized uh, are ashamed to share the information, you know, to say that they have uh, gone through that. So uh, just knowing that you can share this out for prevention uh, is, is a great deal. Now, uh, they provide, like I said, a personalized recovery plan, and this is all free. Uh, they, they will ask you, you know, once again, describe the situation, and according to the answer that you give, they will collect that information and put together for you a report uh, that you can send to the Federal Trade Commission and the recovery plan. Um, they will also create a uh, identity theft affidavit uh, using that information, and that you, by using that affidavit, you can send it out to uh, any company that uh, have been uh, scammed using your information. And like I said, you get the uh, customized pre-filled letters. You'll be able to create those letters that you can send uh, with your report of, uh, of ID theft, your affidavit, uh, proof of identity, and other supporting documents that you can send to the credit bureaus and businesses, or even collection agencies that are uh, looking for you to uh, repay. Now, as I said, we get about 35,000 calls a month uh, to Social Security concerning uh, this issue. And, uh, you know, how we can help is things like what we're doing today, outreach and education to the community, letting you know uh, what's going on out there, how it's happening, and the things that you can do to prevent um, that. Of course, we can replace or correct social security numbers. Now, in order to um, replace a social security number, um, this, this is done in extreme cases only, and there is a tremendous amount of information that we would need in order to do that. Uh, there is uh, about 13 million cases of uh, identity theft that we have recorded so far. And as you can imagine, we cannot use 13 million new numbers. We'll be ru running out of social security number fairly quick. So uh, it, it, we have a uh, way of doing that, but it's, it's a very rigorous process in order to do that. Uh, also, uh, social security uh, can also help by verifying the information that is in your records Perhaps some of you have already opened a My Social Security account, uh, and it, you can visit our website, www.socialsecurity.gov, uh, to do that. And uh, by doing that, you'll be able to look into your Social Security records, how much you have paid in, uh, Social Security and, and Medicare. Um, and, and you can uh, get all kind of information concerning your record. And of course, you can lock up your records to make sure that no one will have access to those um, that record. Uh, if somebody used your social security number to work, uh, you'll be able to see it there as well. And we can help you, uh, of course, to correct those records. And as always, you know, we have all kind of um, referrals, uh, telephone numbers that, that we can give you uh, in case that uh, you give us a call concerning that. Uh, like I said, uh, what we cannot do, however, is correct your credit record. The credit companies are individual privately owned business, uh, and they are run by corporations and Social Security have absolutely no way of fixing uh, anybody's records. Uh, also, uh, if you give us a call and tell us about ID theft, we have no ability to report that to anybody. Uh, we, we will, we can give you information, uh, but we cannot do the report for you. Uh, and finally, we cannot act as an advocate. Uh, so, in other words, we cannot represent you 
before any kind of companies or anything like that, uh, because we just don't have the authority um, to do that. Now, here is uh, the three major uh, credit report, PRL's information. And once again, if you have been victimized, you need to contact them individually. Uh, you can uh, also, uh, you're entitled by law to have a free copy of your credit report once a year. Uh, the way I do this personally, I go to each company uh, or once every four months. So this month I may go to Equifax and request my report. And from now, for four months from now, I'll go to Expedia and ask for the report. And four months after that, I will go to TransUnion. So in that way, every four months, I'm looking at a, a, a different company report, and that would allow me to spot any issues that uh, may have come up during this uh, previous four months. And you can either do that by going into their uh, websites, uh, which are uh, listed here in the top. You can call them and report uh, the fraud that you or, or identity theft issue. Um, if you have uh, any other kind of reports, there it is. Uh, if you want to do it uh, by mail, uh, you can also do that uh, as well. Now, there's a number of resources that uh, you can use uh, to report uh, your fraud or any kind of issues uh, concerning ID theft. And as I mentioned before, the Federal Trade Commission has the phone number. You can call them or you can visit that. Uh, identitythev.gov uh, and get that taken care of. If you have tax issues, of course, that that is a problem with the IRS. And, and uh, I understand that uh, the IRS have been using some of uh, our data in the past uh, year and a half, almost two years to send out um, your impact, uh, economic impact payments, your, your, your and but they don't come from social security but they use our data so they know where you're at and where's your bank account and that sort of thing but if you're having issues with uh, that you have to contact the irs directly and and uh here's a, a website and a telephone number that you can use to contact them and and uh to get information concerning that um there's also frontline at uh, id uh, fraud line, uh, hotlines, excuse me, fraud hotlines that you can call. And as I said, uh, you can visit the uh, website where you got the annual creditreport.com or call that 800 uh, number to actually have them uh, send it to you. Now, uh, once again, I, I, I can tell you that uh, many, many people have been uh, abused. Uh, bank accounts empty. You have to understand once you give somebody uh, your your information is out there. Uh, you had had uh, personal friends call me even after duty hours to tell me, hey, you know, I got a call and they said it was from Social Security and they needed to verify some information and I gave it to them. What do I do now? And once again, you know, social security, what can we do? You know, not much. And when, once these people have your bank information, uh, your debit card and your credit card information, uh, you know, it, it's gone. And they will use it normally as soon as they possibly can. Uh, there was a lady here in Oklahoma City uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, 84 year old widow, her husband had worked all her life. Uh, their life and, and left it um, some money so she would have a, a good end of life and a ID uh, thief was able to get her to give uh, bank information and within 10 minutes uh, after she gave that information uh, of course you know we were able to get this information from a, a, the attorney general's office uh, they had drained her whole account uh, about 220, I, I think with $225,000 she had in the bank, um, 
had been taken completely out and he was out of the country within uh, like 10 minutes. And once that money's gone, it's gone. There's, there's, there's nothing the FBI, the bank or anybody can do. Uh, so uh, be careful. Uh, it, it's important that uh, uh, you are uh, constantly aware who's around you, where you stick in your credit card, who are you giving information to, uh, and, and really ask them why do they need it. Uh, I personally, for instance, do not give my social security number to my doctor. He doesn't need it, okay? Uh, there are other ways of uh, information to be shared through your ins insurance company or how they want to keep your records. So uh, be always aware uh, on, on everything that's going on. Be aware of your neighbors, be aware of your family. If you find some suspicion that things going on with your grandmother or your mother or your aunt or whoever, anybody in your circle of influence, perhaps some church members who appear to be having some difficulties, uh, please approach him, ask him, offer him help, uh, because sometimes people are just too afraid uh, to talk about this situation. And you can always give us a call, uh, Social Security. Um, it's it just a uh, uh, final note on Social Security. Uh, as you know, the Social Security offices are close to the public. Uh, since March of last year, and we continue to provide services uh, via telephone uh, and online. Uh, here in Oklahoma, we started uh, recently a, a pilot project in some areas where we are trying to do uh, this kind of uh, situation where people can actually uh, see us face to face. Like this, and um, they can uh, simply. Uh, talk to us. Uh, some people just don't feel comfortable doing their uh, uh, business any other way. So we are available to you. Uh, Social Security, once again, 1-800-772-1213. Uh, and you can visit our website, www.socialsecurity.gov. And uh, we will be happy to help you uh, in any way we can. With that, I uh, turn it over back to Ray. All right. Thank you, Jose. That was awesome. I, I did not know about that identitytheft.gov website. I'm going to go out there and, and practice with that. I think it's going to be a really good tool for some of our seniors. Uh, we've got a question that somebody asked, and you may have answered this during the presentation. I kind of picked up on a few statements that you made, but what they were asking is, is there a service that you can use to check and see if you've been a victim of identity theft? Um, well, the only way to really do that is to uh, check your credit report. Uh, that's that's the only real way uh, because these these people they don't really use that to pay your taxes or anything like that. They do it to open bank accounts and to order things uh, online and that sort of thing. And and that's the easiest way uh, to identify any kind of issues. Yeah, we we say that basically the same thing on the Medicare side is is it really relies on the individual to identify when fraud has occurred, because if they're looking at those bank statements, if they're looking at their Medicare summary notice or the explanation of benefits, look at those documents when they receive those. And they're the ones that are going to be able to say, wait a minute, I didn't go to the doctor that day, or I didn't make that purchase and that shouldn't be on my credit card statement or something like that. So that, you know, we tell them, look at it, identify something that looks weird to you and then call those people. Call, you know, the vendor or call the doctor's office or someone like that. See if you can do some verification and then report it to the proper authorities. Um, the other thing that blew my mind, 35,000 calls a month related to social security fraud. That's scary. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily always social security, but since the first thing that they think of is somebody stole my social security card or, you know, or got my number, the first people they think of is we're going to call social security. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. 35,000 calls a month nationwide. Um, and, and, and those are the people who, you know, feel, okay, I, I need to talk to somebody. There's like, I mentioned before, uh, you know, four out of five people get scammed. Don't even bother, uh, because they're afraid 
to look like fools or that the family will not understand and, and you know, try to take their, their financial uh, uh, responsibilities from them. Uh, and, and they still want to live an independent life and they're afraid. And the amount it might be small because most scammers, you know, they, they're about $400, four to yeah. $500. And, and for us who are working, that, that is a good chunk of money. But for somebody who's retired, that is a tremendous amount of money. And, and uh, I, I recently uh, heard of, you know, so many people who have lost their, their part-time jobs who were counting on Social Security. In Oklahoma, uh, we have over um, 800,000 people receiving benefits from Social Security today. That's one out of every four Oklahomans. That's about a billion dollars a month that come in here. Uh, and out of that, well over half a million are people over 65, and about 70% of them, all they have is Social Security. So losing four or $500 uh, from their, their Social Security check that month um, is a huge, huge uh, deal. Is, uh, go ahead, Adrian. Well, I was just going to ask for people that have children or grandchildren, how would we check to see if anybody has used their social security number. Would we also check the credit bureaus for their number as well? Right, because uh, a child shouldn't have a credit report. Um, and, and so if, if, if you go in there and, and uh, you see that there is a credit report for that child, that should be a, a flag right there. Yes. Okay, I see a question that has popped up in chat real quick. It says, can I collect my deceased spouse's social security and my own at the same time? No. Um, we, we will pay you whichever one is the higher benefit. So it, it's, that's, that's the, the basic rule. Whichever one is the higher benefit, that's what we will pay. Unless you'd rather take the lower one and allow for the other one to grow to a larger amount. But you cannot have both checks, no. Interesting. You talked again about how the social security offices are closed right now because of the pandemic and what the wait list is like. You and I have had conversations about what, you know, people who are, are wanting to go in and talk to someone face to face, but it's just not possible right now. Did you, can you talk about some of the things that people don't, may not know that they can do through your website? There's a lot of the things that they think they have to go in for, but they could really do online if they can just get access to a computer and maybe if they're not comfortable using a computer, they can have one of their kids or a caregiver help them do some of these functions. I'm glad you asked because uh, you, you're right. Uh, if you want to re apply for retirement uh, today, uh, if you call one of our larger offices like Oklahoma City in Tulsa, they have a waiting list of about two to three months. But you can go to our website and apply for retirement online that will take you probably about 10 minutes. That's it. Uh, and you don't have to wait. Uh, if you want to apply for disabilities, it's, it's a longer process uh, that might take you, uh, who knows, maybe an hour to get it all done at your own pace. But once again, you know, it's a three month waiting time to even get an appointment for those. Um, so if you are, uh, let's say, uh, receiving disability payments and you decide to go back to work, you're supposed to report your wages to Social Security. Uh, using a My Social Security account, you can simply go in there and report those. If you are right now needing a copy of your 1099 for this year to file your taxes, um, most people just come to the office and try to get it printed. If you have a My Social Security account, you can print it at home. Okay, you don't even have to wait for it to come in the mail. So there, there's a lot of things that you can do. And so I encourage everyone to visit our website, www.socialsecurity.com, and just go visit. We have all kinds of things, resources, and, and applications, and, and things that you can do online. Okay, I've got one that you may or may not know the answer to this. So let's say that we've got an individual who uh, paid their FICA taxes, they're eligible for Medicare, they retire, and they are, you know, they're on Social Security, they are... Um, getting their Medicare, and then that individual decides they want to go back to work, which has been quite common. I know of a lot of people who had retired, changed their minds, and got back into the workforce. Do those individuals continue paying FICA taxes? 
the law requires that employers take FICA taxes from anybody that they work with. Okay. So that's 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 yes, you have to pay the FICA tax. However, if uh, if you do this before your full retirement age, uh, let's say 66, 67, whatever it is, when you're supposed to get your 100%, uh, the full retirement age is when uh, a point from that point forward, we don't care if you're working or not. But if you're working before that, you know, there's a limit of how much you, you can earn. And if you're paying those taxes, once you get to that full retirement age, we will automatically give you credit for any tax uh, FICA uh, taxes that you paid into the system. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Jose, thank you. Go ahead, Adrian. I was just going to say, if anybody wants to contact you or reach out to you, how would they find you? Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can email me at uh, Jose, J O S E. Uh, dot olivero at ssa.gov i'm going to go ahead and put this in the blog thing and then anybody can uh, send me an email that's the easiest way to get in contact with me um, and normally I, I'm, I'm on i normally start working at 6 a.m so uh and that's the first thing i do to check my um email let me see Jose, that's early. I think Ray's probably starting that early too, not me. <laughs> so you can, see, you know, if you have a question or uh, uh, any concern, I'll be more than happy. Uh, Central Time. I'm I'm here in Oklahoma City, so you you can call me. Uh, excuse me. You can send me an email, and uh, we'll we we'll go from there. So uh, okay. All right. That I'm sounds great. Be more than happy. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We are at the top of the hour, but I wanted to remind you, we do have several more of these hoodwinked events coming up in the following Thursdays. Uh, next week, we have got Michael Fry from the attorney general's office. Who's going to be speaking on how family members can help their loved ones with their affairs, but not crossing that line that might get them into a precarious situation. We've also got Amy Nofziger, who's from AARP, who's going to be talking about romance scams. Uh, Elaine Dodd is going to be with us again talking about banking fraud. We've got a new player coming this year, uh, Frederick Lohman, who is uh, is going to be talking about contractor fraud. So uh, he, he's going to be on June 17th. So please visit our website, oid.ok.gov. Get registered for any of those that uh, are in, of interest to you. And we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thank you very much.